Today, I want to share with you how to create a task manager inside of Notion. This task manager is going to do two different things. It's going to sort projects, and it's also going to sort the tasks that correspond with those projects, or in other words, subtasks. This sorting is going to be determined by a priority tag and a deadline. Other than that, we're going to be using a series of filters to make all of this look nice. You can take this a ton of steps further, but this is a good place to start. What I'm looking at here is the template you'll see in the description down below. Inside of this template, this is the final product, by the way, you'll see a link called build with me template. This is the template we'll be using in this video. If you are interested in building along, you can do so. There should be a duplicate button up at the top right hand corner. I have projects A through D, which can also be called tasks. And then I have all of their corresponding subtasks. Really, all of these subtasks, once they are completed, these projects will be completed. So how do I connect a subtask to its corresponding project? I'm going to create a relation property and I'm going to call it subtasks. Change the property type to relation. Select a database. What a relation does is it connects one database to another database. In this case, I actually want to connect to the database we're already in, which is called the tasks. So the tasks. Okay, so in here we're prompted with two options. We have sync both ways or no syncing. I'm going to choose sync both ways and I'll show you why. When I select this option, a new relation should show up to the side here. It does show up, but didn't show up in here. So if that's the case, just click inside of one of these cells or one of these entries and you'll see it populate. It says related to the tasks and in parentheses, subtasks. I'm going to rename this to project. And I want to make sure that I see it in this main view. So I'm going to go to properties and tick on project. Let's drag project to the side here. I can start connecting subtasks to it. So I can search for A1 and A2. You'll notice that the project relation property to the side of A1, A2, and A3 has automatically populated with its corresponding parent. So the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and fill out all of these subtasks. So I'm just going to search for them. I want to go ahead and sort these in an interesting way, something that visually makes sense. Now, the first technique I want to show you is simply nest all of these subtasks underneath their corresponding project. For instance, tasks A1 through A3, I want to automatically sort under project A. The best way to do this is to create an ID property so let's just call this ID and make it a formula. And inside of here, I'm going to say something like this. If not empty, property project. So if the project relation is not empty, which means it is a subtask, then I want to show the name of the project plus the name. Otherwise, so the false condition or the project's ID, I just want to show the project name. Close this out with a parentheses. If should be a lowercase i, this is what it should look like. Now what I'm going to do is go to the menu of this database, go to sort, and I'm going to sort this ID property ascending. And this should give us this project A with all of its subtasks, project B with all of its subtasks, and so on. So if you're more advanced with Notion, you can really go to town with this ID method. But for this example, what I'm going to show you is a little bit more simple and easier to understand for newer users. So we're going to use rollups and sorting. Another way to visualize these tasks and their projects is to first differentiate one from another. So let's create a sticker and just create some emojis. This is again a formula. So we're going to say again, if not empty, project. So right now we're working with the subtasks. I want to show one emoji. And if not, so the projects, I'll show another. I'm going to bring up my emoji. And I'm just going to say, give me a white block for subtasks. Maybe do about six of these. And then give me a black block for projects. Again, projects could just be parent tasks. 
three, four, five, six. That's what that looks like. I'm gonna drag this sticker over to the side. And what I'm gonna do now is actually hide this project property because I don't really think that's necessary right now. And these subtasks. Now what I wanna do is add two very important properties. One is deadline and another is priority. Of course, this is a date property. Priority is going to be a select property. What you can do inside of these priority tags is just create three different priorities labeled high, medium, and low. I went ahead and colored them red, yellow, and green. Now I want them to kind of be flush with each other. So I am adding some underscores, adding five for high and two, or in fact, let's just add one and for low, I believe six. I just want all of these to be flush with each other. It seems a little bit obnoxious, but just visually, I, I need this. So I'm gonna add one more to high and another one to medium and another one to low. That looks nice. Now let's go ahead and create some deadlines for each of these projects. Now in this example, I only want to give deadlines to projects. So let's just give them random ones. I do want to give all of my subtasks priorities as well, because if we go and we sort our projects by priority, what I also want to do is when we go into these subtasks, I also want to sort them by their priority. So I know which one to do first. Now what we can do is start figuring out how to sort all this. But first what I want to do is I want to separate our projects from our subtasks. So I'm going to go forward slash link database at the top here and I'm going to search for the tasks. I'm gonna start taking away some of these um, properties that aren't really necessary to see because up here, we're just gonna see the projects. Let's keep priority and deadline because those are important. Now I'm gonna add a filter. Going to that database menu and we're gonna add a filter that says project is empty. This will give me only the projects. The next thing I want to do is create a done checkbox over in our tasks because I have yet to have done that. So I just wanna put that there really quick. And then for the filter in our tasks section, I want to create pretty much the opposite of what we just made inside of the projects. So add filter project is not empty. Now we're starting to get into next actions. So what I wanna do is create a couple of rollups. Firstly, let's hide this deadline since it's not really necessary inside of the tasks. First of all, let's take a look at these projects. If you're following along and you really wanna to follow to a T, this is what my projects look like with their priorities and their deadlines. So the first thing I wanna find is the project deadline. I'll just call this project due. I'm gonna change the property to rollup. And here, what I'm gonna do is select a relation which in this case will be project, a property, which in this case will be deadline. Go down to calculate and choose earliest date. This will show us the earliest date the project is due that is associated with this subtask. What I wanna do is create another property called project priority. Let's change this property type to a rollup. And again, I'm just going to find the relation project and the property priority. Now you'll notice that subtask A1, A2, and A3 have their own individual priorities, but they also have their project's priority rolled up from project A, which you'll notice is a medium priority. From here, I'm going to create a sort inside of these tasks. Go to sort, and I'm going to sort project due ascending, and then project priority ascending. Subtask D1, D2, and D3 are now the tasks we need to work on first, and then project A, and then project B, and then project C. Next, what I wanna do is add another sort inside of the tasks that sorts the individual subtask priority. You'll see that some of this has shifted. Now, instead of working on D1, D2, then D3, first, we should work on subtask D3 because it's a high priority inside of a high priority project. 
and then a medium priority task inside of a high priority project, and then so on down the list. Now what I can do is hide these rollups. I have a, another database view, if you are building this along with me, that says archive. What I want to do is every single time a subtask is done by creating a filter, I want it to hide inside of this archive. So where done is checked. Going back to tasks, I'm going to make a filter that is the opposite. I'm going to add a filter that says project is not empty and done is unchecked. So that every time a subtask is done, it will disappear into this archive. I can also go to properties and make sure that done is viewable so that if I accidentally press done, I can uncheck them back into the task list. Now, what you can do inside of your own space is go into that sort and start moving things around. Maybe you prioritize the priority above the project due date. Maybe you prioritize the subtask priority over the project's priority. Whatever works for you. You can also create more rollups and really make this more unique and more customized to your own needs. I want to show you how we can indicate the progress of a project as we tick away these subtasks. So let's create a new um, property up here at projects and call it progress. I'm going to make this a rollup again, except this time I'm going to grab subtasks and then I'm going to grab this done checkbox, go to calculate and go to percent checked. You'll see the progress of each project tick up to 100%. What I would want to do is keep this project link database at the top of maybe a dashboard and then keep these tasks somewhere else. Now, if you want to turn a database into its own page, you can go to these three dots and go to turn into page. And then you can really send this page anywhere inside of your workspace with move to and then search for the page you want to move it to. Now, what I want to do is focus on these projects. Inside of a project, here are some of the properties we'll be able to see. Project due. Do we really need to see this property inside of this card? No. So I'm going to go down to hide property and say hide when empty. In fact, for all of these properties, I do suggest hiding when empty just to clean it up. Let's look at the last way we can visualize tasks. So what I can do is create a template and you'll see this option to press enter to continue with an empty page or create a template. I'm going to create a template and I'm going to call this new project. So I'm only going to click this template when I am making a new project or a new task. I could give it an emoji if I want. Now what I want to do inside the body of this page is automatically show all of the subtasks associated with this project inside of a database. So that not only can I see those subtasks, but I can also add subtasks to this project. So I'm just going to go forward slash link database. Again, I'm searching for the tasks, which is the database we're working with. And I'm going to clean up some of these properties again. Now what I can do is create a filter. Now when I go to filter, I just want to say that the project project, that relation contains new project, which is the name of this template. The next thing I can do is just add a simple sort, which just has our priority ascending. So now when I go back to project D or really any of these projects, I can select this template, new project. It will populate that emoji at the top and sync all of the subtasks associated with this project. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is a great way to just go from your classic task list to something a little bit more advanced. Let's go right into the outro. So if you are looking to build a task manager or just enhance the one you already have, I hope this helped. I hope there wasn't too many properties to add to a database you already have, but it really is as simple as using this parent-child relation and a couple of rollups. Other than that, I am more than happy to help you guys down in the comments and I will see you guys next week with a new video and the rest of the week on Twitter.